Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have the Bulova Precisionist Catamount 300 meter diver, model number 98B166. And you know the drill, we'll open it up, look at the fit and finish, the features and the functions, the build quality, and then I'll give you my overall impressions of his 300 meter diver from Bulova. Also, make sure you check out my Amazon page for this and many of my other favorite watches. I'll make sure to put a link in the description field for you. So here you go, white outer sleeve on your typical Bulova watch box. There you go. Here is the watch on a black pillow, it looks like. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm not feeling great today, so this might not be my most uh, professional <laughs> review. Uh, there you go. It looks like you got a manual there. Boring, boring, boring. Pillow, super boring. Watch box, boring. Let's put it all up. <laughs> I'm a little grumpy today, guys. All right. Now, we'll go ahead and um, get some uh, basic specs here. All right, let's look at this case size. This thing is huge. That 48.8, eh, let's say 49. All right, uh, let's, look at it. let's look at the thickness. Thickness you're looking at 13. Let's do a lug to lug. Uh, 54, let's say, go ahead and say 54. Um, let's look at the uh, rubber strap. I think it starts out a little bit thicker. Yeah, it starts out at 21. Let's go down here. All right, wait a minute, something's going wrong here. Let me try this again. Here, let me, let me do this. All right, let's do this. Start off at the top. Top is 23. Near the end of the strap. You're looking at 22, so there you go. So 23 to 22. All right, now on the left-hand side, I'll go ahead and put all of the uh, more concrete specs, and uh, we'll talk about this thing. Again, I'm not feeling great, <clears throat> so please give me a little bit of slack. <laughs> As you can see with those measurements uh, with the digital calipers, I'm not feeling, <laughs> I'm not feeling fantastic today. Uh, anyway, looking at 300 meters water resistant, which of course is 990 feet. Uh, it has a, the Bulova precisionist, precisionist movement inside. It has the date function down there at seven o'clock. I'm sorry, it has a date function at six o'clock and it says, what does it say on it? It says the third on it. Gosh, I'm really not feeling great. Um, the date function at date function at six o'clock, uh, it is hackable. It has about a two year battery life. It does have a mineral crystal. It has a screw down crown over at three o'clock that we will talk about later. Uh, it has a bezel lock system up here at 10 and I'll demonstrate that later as well. Now, <clears throat> these watches have been around for about seven years. Uh, so they've been on Amazon and on eBay and other places for quite a long time. Uh, they're really good sellers for Bulova. Bulova's done a fantastic job with this watch. Um, you know, kind of a, a great mixture of, you know, nice technology, good technology, really, really decent build quality and functionality. They've done a fantastic job with this watch. Um, it's very legible. You have big, huge indexes. Some say indices. If you're in Europe, most people say indices. If you're uh, over here in the Americas, a lot of times it's indexes, both work. So for those that are saying, you're saying indexes or indices wrong, just whatever. They're the same thing. They're interchangeable. So don't get your panties in a wad. <laughs> anyway, um, as you can tell, this is a precision move because it has that big, huge uh, sweeping second hand with the precision logo there on the back end. You can see right there. There you go. Now this is, of course, this is a 262 kilohertz watch. So you're going to have that really nice, smooth, sweeping second hand. It's mesmerizing, man. I love to stare at it. Really, really cool. Uh, again, on the dial, you kind of have a multi-layer dial. Uh, it has kind of a faux uh, carbon fiber look where the indexes are, where the indexes look like they're, uh, yeah, they are applied. Everything is applied on the dial. Uh, even, it looks like, yeah, yeah, the, the logo, the Bulova logo is applied and uh, the tuning fork up there. Um, it has a, kind of like a fake carbon fiber look, if you can see that right there. Um, again, really legible. Um, I like the skeletonized second hand. I mean, I'm sorry, the, the minute and second hand. I like that little red accent around the date window down there at six o'clock. And I like the red accented second hand, the uh, precisionist second hand with the logo there. Really cool. Uh, bezel, nice bezel, really good click action. This, this is the, uh, the God, I can't, I can't talk today, man. This is the bezel lock system. As you can see, you can turn it real freely. But when you turn the bezel lock system on, oops, there we go. 
Can't turn it at all. Will not budge at all. So that's just another feature for divers to make sure that bezel doesn't move while on a dive. Because this is how they time how long they can be down underwater by this um, by this marking right here. And most of the time, divers go down for about, eh, I guess, about 20 minutes. So that's why you'll see in a lot of watches, the uh, 0 to 20 is always highlighted, either on the bezel or on the dial or on both. So there you go. Um, <clears throat> so I like the dial. I like the um, the bezel. I like the bezel lock system. It's kind of a neat little feature. Um, you have some crown guards around the uh, crown itself. Now, there's a, a big problem with this crown. As you noticed, as you can notice, let me see. Let me try to screw this in. And there you go. That's as far as it screws in. See how much threads are left? So I think I got a dud here. So I'm definitely sending this back. Um, I don't want to try to force it. It just will not screw all the way down. And I don't want to strip those threads. So I got a, I think unfortunately I got a dud here. Everything else is fine. It's just the way the machine this crowd, I think there's some metal burrs inside the threads that keep this crown from being screwed all the way in. That's really unfortunate. Um, anyway, the rest of the case is just highly polished. There really are no smooth surfaces or brushed or, or matte finishes. Everything is highly polished. The strap uh, is pretty supple. It's not as supple as some of those citizen, high-end citizen and Seiko straps. Excuse me. Uh, but it feels pretty good. It's really long, which I do like, and I'll show you that here when I try it on. Uh, it gets the job done. Um, the case back, nothing spectacular. Just some laser etching of the bull of a logo and some of the specs about the watch. You've got the Precisionist logo down there. Uh, and you can see, look at that crown. You just can't, it will not screw in any, any further. Let me try it again. And it pops out fine. Let me try it again. You know, you know, everybody knows that tactic now that you kind of wind it backwards a little bit or turn it backwards a little bit before you go forwards. And that just does not work on this thing. This crown is really, really messed up. Anyway, that's unfortunate. Um, what else? Uh, these are getting pretty expensive. So you might want to, you know, pick one up while you can. Uh, the white dialed version of this is going for almost $500 now. So these have been on the market, like I said, for about six years. Their production run is probably pretty close to being over with. Uh, so they're getting a little more scarce out there while people snap them up and they probably are starting to produce less of them. I mean, it feels like a quality watch. I'm really, really disappointed. I have to say with this crown being all screwed up. Um, but the watch itself, I like, I would probably myself go for the white version of this just because I like it better. I just aesthetically, I just like the way it looks better than this, than this black version. Nothing against the black version. I just, eh, I just like the white version better. And some watches, I definitely prefer the black version better. But this one just, I think, looks better uh, with that white dial. So anyway, um, what else did I want to tell you about this? Um, look like you got two movable keepers right there. You have a nice signed logo on the uh, the buckle. Let me see here. What else? Guys, this is a pretty simple watch. The main, you know, the neatest thing about this watch is you've got that, you've got that 260 two kilohertz movement side. Your normal quartz watch is at, is a, is ag, is, God, I can't talk. It's accurate to about 10 or 15 seconds a month, okay? This watch with the precision smooth with the 262 kilohertz is accurate to about 10 to 15 seconds a year, okay? Let me, let me say that again. 10 to 15 seconds a year as opposed to 10 or 15 seconds a month. That's what you're paying for when you get this watch. Obviously, the fact that it's waterproof to 300 meters, you're paying for that as well, but you're also mainly paying for that really, really accurate quartz movement. Um, Bulova has really become known for their quartz movements. I reviewed the Snorkel a few months ago, and I have to say, I kind of like I kind of like the looks of the Snorkel a little bit better than this. This is all my personal opinion, you know, so take that with a grain of salt. Get the watch you want, you know, get this in black or get it in white or get a, a Snorkel, get whatever you want. Uh, but I think I like the snorkel version a little bit better than this one. Uh, and maybe that's, you know, maybe my opinion's being influenced by the fact that this crown is all screwed up. And that really, really irritates me. But I'll just send it back and I'll you maybe get another one or get the white version or something like that. Uh, but it's a cool looking watch. It's a neat watch. It's a really cool technology. And that's going to be the main draw for this. I almost forgot to try this thing on for you. So let's go ahead and try this on. Really, really big rubber strap, which I like. Thing's got a ton of room on it. Wow. That's almost too big. 
All right. There you go. Really, really good wrist presence. It's, it's a good looking watch, absolutely. So there you go, there's the wrist shot. Now let's go ahead and get a loom shot. Let me go ahead and kill the studio light and turn off the monitor here. All right, let's turn off the monitor. Turn off studio light. Let's go ahead and zap this thing real quick. See what we have loom wise. Now it's not pitch black in here because it's, I don't know, it's about two o'clock in the afternoon. So it's not dark outside, so I can't get the room as dark as I want it. There you go, decent loom. Kind of what I expected. Eh, it's like it's actually starting to fade out a little bit already. But anyway, with a little bit more, you know, longer exposure of light, it's gonna, it's gonna shine a little bit brighter. But to the naked eye, this thing is almost totally faded. Uh, it looks like the camera's picking up a little bit of the loom better than, uh, yeah, it looks like it's totally faded. Anyway, so there you go. There's the uh, the wrist shot and the loom shot. Like I said, I'll go ahead and put a link in the description field if you want to buy this watch. And make sure you check out my Amazon page for this and many of my other favorite watches. I'll make sure to put a link in the description field for that. And if you like this video, please click on like. And if you want to subscribe to my channel, please do so. I would really, really, really appreciate it. And again, sorry guys, this hasn't been my most professional review because <laughs> I'm just not feeling great. Anyway, got some really cool stuff coming up and um, that's about it. Until the next review, I'll see y'all later. Take care, bye-bye.